sincerity of devotion. It must be remembered that without being sincere in the way of Allah, it is not possible to attain to spiritual stations and stages. Truth cannot be unraveled to a spiritual traveler unless he is fully sincere and single-minded in his devotion. There are two stages of sincerity. The first stage is of carrying out all religious injunctions for the sake of Allah only. The second stage is of devoting one's entire self exclusively to Allah. The first stage is indicated by the following verse. They are ordained nothing but to worship Allah, keeping religion pure for him. Surah al bayyinah verse 5. The second stage is indicated by the following verse. Save single-minded slaves of Allah. Surah as safat verse 128. There is a well-known prophetic tradition to the effect that he who has kept himself pure for Allah for forty days, fountains of wisdom flow from his heart to his tongue. This tradition also alludes to the second stage of sincerity. The Quran has at certain places described a deed as salih, virtuous and pious. For example, it is said, whoever did a salih, virtuous and pious deed, and at some other places it describes some men as salih. For example, at one place it says, Surely he was one of the salih, pious. Similarly, it has sometimes described a deed as sincere and sometimes a man as sincere. It is obvious that man's sincerity depends on his deeds, and he cannot be sincere unless he is sincere in all his deeds and in all that he does or says. Allah says, To him ascends good word, and the good deed raises it. Surah Al-Fatir, verse 10 It may be remembered that a man who attains to the grade of personal sincerity is endowed with certain other characteristic qualities which are not possessed by others. An important characteristic, which he acquires according to a text of the Quran, he becomes immune from the domination of Satan. The Qur'an quotes Satan as saying, My Lord, I swear by your honor, I shall adorn the path of error for them in the earth, and shall mislead all of them, except such of them as are your sincerely devoted slaves. Surah Al-Hijr, verse 82 It is clear that Allah's sincere devoted slaves have been excluded here, not because Satan was forced by Allah to do so. They have been excluded because owing to their attaining to the station of unity, Satan can no longer gain control over them. As these people made themselves pure for Allah, they see Allah wherever they cast their eyes. Whatever shape Satan may assume, they see the manifestation of Allah's glory in it. That is why Satan has admitted from the beginning his helplessness against them. Otherwise, it is his job to seduce the children of Adam and to lead them astray. He can have no mercy on anyone. The second point is that the sincerely devoted slaves of Allah will be exempted from reckoning on the Day of Judgment. The Qur'an says, 
and the trumpet is blown, and all who are in the heavens and the earth swoon away, save him whom Allah wills. Surah Az Zumar, verse 68. This verse definitely shows that an unspecified group of people will be saved from the horrors of the Day of Judgment. When we match this verse with another verse which reads, They will surely be produced, save sincerely single-minded people. Surah as safat verses 39-40 it becomes clear what that group will be. The sincerely devoted people need not be brought up for reckoning. They have already secured eternal life as the result of their meditations, self-annihilation and ceaseless acts of devotion. They have already passed the reckoning and judgment, and as having been slain in the way of Allah, they have provisions with their Lord. Think not of those who are slain in the way of Allah as dead. Nay, they are living. With their Lord they have provision. Surah Ali Imran, verse 169. Moreover, only that one is produced who is not present. These people are already present even before the beginning of the Day of Resurrection, for Allah says that they have a provision with their Lord. The third point is that, on the Day of Judgment, people will generally be rewarded and recompensed for their deeds. But these sincerely single-minded people will be favored with rewards beyond their deeds. Allah says, You are not requited, but what you did. Save sincerely single-minded slaves of Allah. Surah Az-Zumar, verse 40 If it is claimed that this verse means only that the sinner will be punished for their sins, but the reward given to the virtuous will purely be a favor bestowed on them by Allah. We will say that this verse is general in its connotation and does not exclusively refer to the sinners. Moreover, there is no contradiction between Allah's favor and his recompense, for Allah's favor means that he sometimes rewards a great deal for small deeds. In spite of this kind of favor, the reward still remains for the deeds performed. But what this verse says is quite a different thing. It says that what Allah will bestow on his sincerely single-minded slaves will be a pure favor, not a reward for any deeds at all. Another verse says, there they have all that they desire, and there is more with us. Surah Kaf, verse 35 This verse means that the inmates of paradise will have all that man can desire or wish. Not only with that, but Allah will bestow on them what they cannot imagine or think of. This point is worth considering. The fourth point is that this group holds such a high position that its members can glorify Allah in the most appropriate manner. Allah says, Glorified be Allah from what they attribute to Him, except what the sincerely single-minded slaves of Allah say of Him. Surah as safat verses 159-160 to 160. This is the highest position that a man can occupy. The above-mentioned details show what the blessings of this last stage of Gnosis are. But, 
it must be kept in mind that these blessings can be obtained only when a spiritual traveler's ceaseless devotion reaches the stage of self-annihilation so that he may be called to have been slain in the way of allah and may become eligible for the reward reserved for martyrs just as in the battlefield the sword cuts off the connection between the body and soul of a martyr similarly a spiritual traveler snaps off the connection between his body and soul by fighting against his appetitive soul for this purpose he acquires the help of his spiritual power instead of using his physical force in the beginning of his spiritual journey a devotee should lead an ascetic life and should constantly contemplate of the worthlessness of vanities of the world and thus should break off his relation to the world of plurality when he would cease to be interested in the world no material gain will ever please him nor will any material loss grieve him so that you grieve not for what you have missed and exult not for what you have been given surah al-hadid verse 23 indifference to the happiness and sorrow does not mean that the spiritual traveler does not feel happy even about the bounties of allah or does not grieve at anything which may distress him for happiness about allah's favor is not the result of his love for worldly trivialities such as wealth rank honor fame etc he loves the bounties of allah because he finds himself overwhelmed by his mercy after passing this stage the devotee feels that he still loves himself ardently whatever spiritual effort and exercises he makes is the result of his self-love man is selfish by nature he is always ready to sacrifice everything else for his own self he would be willing to destroy anything for the sake of his own survival it is difficult for him to do away with this natural instinct and to overcome his selfishness but so long as he does not do so he cannot expect the divine light to manifest itself in his heart in other words unless a spiritual traveler annihilates his individual self he cannot establish his connection with allah therefore it is necessary for him first to weaken and ultimately to smash the spirit of selfishness so that whatever he may do is done purely for the sake of allah and his sense of self-love may turn into love for him for this purpose ceaseless effort is necessary after passing the stage the devotee's attachment not only to his body and every other thing material ceases to exist but even his attachment to his soul is finished now whatever he does he does for allah alone if he eats to satiate his hunger or provides for the bare necessities of life he does so only because his eternal beloved wants him to continue to live all his wishes become subject to the will of allah that is why he does not seek any miraculous power for himself he believes that he has no right to undertake any sort of spiritual exercise with a view to know the past or predict future events or to practice thought reading or to cover very long distances in a very short time or to make any changes in the universal system or to invigorate his libidinous faculties for such acts are not performed for pleasing allah nor can they be motivated by sincere devotion to him 
they mean only self-worship and are performed for the satisfaction of one's licentious desires, although the person concerned may not admit to this fact, and although he may apparently be sincerely devoted to Allah, but according to the following verses, he only worships his desire. Have you seen him who makes his desire his God? Surah al-Jathiyya, verse 23. Therefore, the spiritual traveler should pass all these stages cautiously and do his best to gain complete control over his vanity. We shall further talk on this subject later. When a devotee reaches this final stage, he gradually begins to lose interest in himself and ultimately forgets himself totally. Now, he sees nothing except the eternal, everlasting beauty of his true beloved. It must be borne in mind that it is essential for the spiritual traveler to gain complete victory over the fiendish horde of licentious desire, love for wealth, fame and power, pride and conceit. It is not possible to attain perfection if any trace of self-love is left. That is why it has been observed that many a distinguished man, even after years-long spiritual exercise and ceaseless acts of devotion, could not attain perfection in Nasus, and was defeated in this battle. That is why it has been observed that many a distinguished man, even after years-long spiritual exercise, and ceaseless acts of devotion could not attain perfection in Gnosis, and was defeated in his battle against his phenomenal self. <laughs>